Well, thank you very much. Um, Dr. Lucy, he just he, he mentioned something which people don't, it's as if before our leaders did not really see the impact of such acts. And even now, what all the African uh, free trade is talking about and the advantages still now, some, or some other presidents are not still seeing the importance, given that they are taking it very slow, like even rectifying the decision is a problem. And then removing the visas only for Africans even is still a problem. So as he just said, to go to Cairo for a seminar, you, you need probably a month or so to file in and then the documents, and it might probably be refused. You're just going there for a business, not to go stay there. So this is really hindering activities in the continent. I think it's high time that other presidents see the way these other countries are moving and then can copy that. So let's talk about the private sector, which you're so much into it, and you gave uh, one of the reasons why you're focusing on it, because that is true. Like in some countries, the private sector, people don't even look at it, because there are no really laws on it following whatsoever. It isn't as if finances are not in that side. Everybody's struggling for the government to employ them. And I don't know if the government can employ the whole country. It's never possible. So far, since you all there started working on this private sector, probably trying to call on people to invest more in this private sector and change some of the rules and regulations that are there, so far has the reaction been and has the impact been on the different countries you're working on or the regions? Thank you very much, Emanuela. And just to piggyback on what my brother John said, for, for me, uh, like coming from East, West Africa, going to East Africa, if I happen to have two countries, I'm going to I'll be processing two or three visas. That's but for us in West African region, that is OK. If I'm going to Senegal, I'm going to Ghana, I don't need a pass uh, visa within the West African sub-region where we've gone that. But if you're moving from one region to another, that is the problem. Uh, in terms of the private sector, in our engagements, one of the things that also come out is that many of the private sector players, they're having challenges in terms of skills that are available within the African continent, skills that are usable at the workplace. Many of our educational institutions have been structured in such a way that the skills that are being produced and yeah, the graduates theory. that are coming out, many of them are not many of them are not ready for the workplace. So therefore, in view of that, the African Education Trust Fund is also one of the things that has come out of the engagement with the private sector within the APSS space. The African Education Trust Fund seeks to engage our educational institutions on the continent, look at the curriculum, look at the certifications to make sure, and as well as the vocational trade centers, so that skills and trade groups can have the applicable requirements that feed into the private sector and even into the public, such that production, the essence is conversion. Africa is so blessed with natural resources. However, we need to convert these natural resources into value added products that can be used internally and also can be exported to generate income just in line with the aspirations of the african continental free trade area so apss is moving two things the issue of the private sector bill of rights to give the private sector opportunity to thrive and to engage and to work in line with that so that jobs can be created and the private sector pays taxes and governments require these taxes as revenue to provide the services to the people. So in line with that, that came out. And in addition to that, the need to look at the educational system and the vocational trade groups is very important. And that leads into the trade groups, the associations. My brother John spoke about them looking at the textiles and the various industry clusters. So that's how the process is mutating along the way. For us as um, APSS, we gather, we speak, we extract what has been discussed, and we push it forward as a policy intervention for the continent to implement. And we measure along the way to see what is working, what is not working. And we go along also, not as APSS alone, but Ubuntu is an African philosophy. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we want to work in partnership. And it's also part of the 17 SDG goals, working in partnership to achieve the goal of the integrated, economically integrated Africa, 
taking care of all the trade and non-trade barriers. If we go into the issue of tariffs, some of the issues are very complicated and highly incentivizing. So, so those kind of things, and even the issue of movement, logistics of goods and services across the continent. Many of our shipping and postal services are still tied to our colonial roots, such that if you need to send something to Johannesburg from Lagos, that thing will either go to London or New York and come back. It's just <laughs> a few of these shipping agencies that are now working. By the time you do this round trip, you find out that the cost of the final product on delivery is so expensive so that expensive. it doesn't make sense. And then also time and time to market is a challenge. Even when we're trying to travel between uh, the various countries in Africa, if I want to go to uh, Conakry, somebody who is going to uh, Australia would have reached before me going to Conakry. And then also, if I need to go to Johannesburg, unless I take South African Airlines, I will have to go round trip that somebody that is going to London would have reached before myself or going to Namibia. So th that issue, the issue of connectivity within Africa for movement of people, goods and services is there. The other one is exchange, interchanging. When I sell my products, if I'm in uh, Cameroon, I should be able to be paid in my local currency, even if my goods went to Namibia or it went to Zambia. Mm -hmm. That aspect is telling a lot, especially on the SMEs, the micro and small enterprises. Now we have trade platforms. We have trade platforms. We have opportunities for virtual trading and shipping. If we can overcome those things and the logistics and the clearance of goods, it will have a lot of impact on our creative industry, including the clothing, the textiles, the local arts and crafts, and, the, and our natural products. Some of our natural products have expiry dates. You can't ship something and for six months it's still on transit. It will arrive expired. Yeah. So those kind of things, we hope that the technocrats and the politicians will see that and that when these SMEs and companies and corporations thrive, there will be taxes, and those taxes are revenues to the government to provide services to people. True. Uh, and if the environment is thriving, you don't take flight to go look for foreign investors. If the environment is conducive, yeah. foreign direct investment will come. Definitely. You don't need to take a whole trip of 50 people going to do promotions yeah. abroad. If it's yeah. good, they will come to the African continent. And there are many corporates that are within Africa that have a lot of funds but they need the safety. So one of the things that uh, APSS is looking at is also de-risking Africa, because some of the governments come up with regulations and policies. Investors invest long term, and you invest based on projections and all those calculations, and some of them are funds borrowed on a long term basis. And then in five years, you see policy flip flop that throws the numbers out of sync. And it can destroy some of the entities because they made those projections. They took a long-term view to invest in an economy. And then the politicians change the policy just like that. And sometimes there's no engagement. So part of the APSS work is that it's okay. Situations change. There might be change. But let there be engagement. Because, for instance, it's out of engagement that the private sector cried about the skills and the competencies around to feed the workplace. And that's why we have the AETF, African Education Trust Fund, to look at the institutions that are churning out the graduates and even the technical vocational schools so that these skills are occupied. Not everybody is going to have the uh, white collar job. There are blue collar jobs, but there should be standards. There should be career paths and there should be KYC so that people will feel safe to allow people to get into their homes and their offices. So that's that's just about it. But it's a good thing that we're speaking. We had a chance to speak at Gabi, the Global Compact event, and my.